Hey, good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. Mm, good night. And good night. What's happening, Cyprus? Man, uh, you know, just, just living that life, having some fun. I just shot my uh, 30-minute comedy special out in L.A. Came out really well. Did, were you happy? I would, yes. I was happy. I would like to have done one more because usually when you shoot something, you shoot two. Right. But this company was like, oh, we're just doing one and done. Like, you could do some pickups at the end if you got to fix something. But, um, but yeah, it came out great. Uh, had a good time, good turnout. And we'll see. All right. Did you meet any uh, Juan Aparoos? There was a Juan Ep fan. Uh, he was hilarious, bro. <laughs> he was in the front row. I think he DM'd me like right before the show and I got him tickets. I didn't realize that was him when I was talking to him on stage. Okay. I go, what's wrong with you? And he go, I go, something about relationships. I go, yo, were you dating somebody? Because I was getting into my dating app joke. He's like, no, nah, I, just, I just broke up recently. I was like, oh, everybody's like, oh, what happened? He goes, I'm, I'm, I'm not good with emotions. <laughs> and we're like, okay. Uh, you know, that's good to, at least you're aware. I you're go, aware. You're aware of it. I go, is that what your ex-girl and her therapist told you? <laughs> <laughs> and then he goes, I'm emotionally unavailable. I've been like that my whole life. And then, uh, he looked, he, he was, he said he was black, but he looked Latino, but I kept calling him Samoan. And he goes, no, nah, cause I'm black. And I was like, you're black. Oh yeah. No, you got, you got identity crisis problems. <laughs> but, um, he was super cool. He was a, like a real Juan Epper. Real, a real deal official. Yeah. And then that guy, Sean, was there that does the hip hop. Um, remember the hip hop trivia thing? Of course. He used to do? Yeah. I see it on the uh, on Instagram still. Yeah. He was there. He's super an, cool. He seems like a really good guy. Super cool, man. I was happy. So, yeah, it came out good. Uh, oh, also, uh, my boy Mastermind was there from Toronto. He runs the, Mastermind. Uh, the radio, Flow 93 in Toronto. Yeah, I'm ready. Uh, he just happened to be in L.A. He was like, yo, you doing a show? And so he came through. Shouts to Mastermind. Uh, so, yeah, it was a good it was a good vibe, man. It was a uh, it, it came out like I like I, again, it's bro. I, I hold this shit too precious. Shoot it. Put it out. It's going to do what it's going to do or it's not going to do shit. It don't matter. I still keep moving. You know what I mean? I 100 percent feel you, my G. Yeah. That's all you yeah. can do. Don't overthink. You can do. Control what you can control. Get it done. Keep it moving. Stop being a bitch. Yeah. I, I'll, I'll tell you this, though. After shooting, and mind you, it's not coming out for months. I can still do the jokes that I did on that special for months. But after shooting, I felt this urge. I was like, okay, I got to write. I got to do more. Do, do more. Write more shit. New shit. You know what I mean? Mm. I got to get a Tonight Show set together. I got to get, um. oh, actually, I want to do Colbert. Colbert's starting to step up with his um stand-up guests. Oh, you know you know, I should reach out to to get you on there? Who? Uh, Charlemagne. He gets on there all the time. <laughs> I'm going I'm to um, I'm hit up Charlemagne. Oh, what if Charlemagne shut me down? Listen, I've seen it happen. But you're Charlotte good. You, you, you and Charlamagne Gay are fine. You he went still on, might shut me down because of you. But you went on The Breakfast Club. We are fine, but I would, I'm not going to trust him with my kids. You know what I mean? Well, no, no, no. I didn't mean to say it like that. that I don't want to sound like I'm the like way you said it. File. The way you said it, it didn't sound great. I just meant he's not a family friend. No. He's not a family friend. No. Oh, uh, well, listen, man, I, I'm glad to hear that it went well. Um, Should we do a whole episode about Puffy? I, I do have some stuff about Puffy. Okay. Should we do a whole episode about it? And break down the industry. Are you, do you watch that guy? You know the Demiza. Remember Demiza? Can I tell you the truth? I, yeah. I don't. I don't know him well. I, I he annoys me on social media. But it's ahead. a weird thing on social media, right? He's like he made this lane for himself. Yeah, of like I'm gonna be the guy, the industry insider, the whistleblower, kind of. Yeah, I'm the exposure who explains everything. And like I, I, I'm not. I know his credentials are real. I know he was a real part of many things. But like I don't know him, so yeah. I don't remember, you know, what his closeness is to all of it. Though I believe it to be real. 
but yeah, it, I don't know. It's like it's weird. It's like a it's like a feels a little gimmicky. He was the he was the PD at Power 106 in LA when Tracy was the PD of Hot 97. God, it's that era. Okay. So he's like that's when Emmis Broadcasting was on top of the world with Power 106 and Hot 97. They were hot. Big boy. Big boy. Big boy. Um but yeah, he's probably going to get a big podcast deal. You think some kind of You mean because because the because things are moving around? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Is that enough to get a podcast deal? Does that mean people are sitting down to listen to the Mizza? I think they watch a random or some kind of some kind of deal. Everybody's getting deals. People are getting deals. Everybody's getting deals, man. Yeah, I don't. What, did you watch any this week? Is he is he breaking all the puffy stuff down? No, he's breaking down the um, labels, firing people, and oh, he loves the label talk. Yeah, like, that's all. That's, that's, okay. what, that's all it is. That's all it is. Here, to me, that my, I see. But here's my question: Why does it get fed to us? Like, I don't like. I don't like the stuff. I don't seek it out either. But yeah, like, it ends up hitting me. I I semi, guess we're just semi regularly in that, in that zeitgeist. My thing is, I mean, these, these lives, like, what are these called? TikTok live? I don't know. Is it like, it feels like Clubhouse, but like on TikTok, kind of? I don't know what the fuck that is, bro. I, I don't even know how to get, I want to get one of these. What do you mean you want to get one? Like, I'm wondering how do you get other people to call you on and put it on TikTok or Instagram? Oh, oh, oh. But all all the different discussions, it's either it's either Trump and Harris or like very blatantly or like, Diddy. I'm a Trump person fighting with the the lefty, or I'm a lefty fighting with the right. It's all crazy. yeah, like it just like this is a black screen and there's this white guy and he's always there and it just says why are you voting for Trump question mark. Yo, people call up and just bro. So move to Russia. <laughs> And go b ask how you get a part of this. There's no, I, I'm not like some crazy conspiracy theorist. All that shit existing to me now is part of some bigger operation that's going on. But, but by who? I don't know. It's interference from somewhere. It's interference from somewhere. Why is that the thing everywhere? It's it's. There's a lot of yapping. There's a lot of, and this week, now I, I'm, I'm sitting here defending Janet Jackson every day. You know? Well, what did she say? She said Kamala Harris is not black. She said, she's like, I... It, what the article said is that in the interview, she said, like, I heard Kamala Harris isn't even black. I, I heard her father's white. And which, by the way, I, I've never heard. That's actually not even a thing that's said. So I was like, Janet, what do you mean you heard that? Her father's <laughs> white. That's not even a thing. Even in the conspiracy theory world, I don't think that's a conspiracy theory. You get bad conspiracy <laughs> theories. So, but. I, but I do, it did still like typify where we're at now. We're like. Immediately when it happened on Saturday, I'm getting multiple texts from people. Yo, go get your girl. And then her name's trending. And people are, and I'm like, guys, Janet has been famous for her entire life. As far as we know, she's yet to even have a misstep. She's never even had a moment where she got in trouble. And anyway. What do you mean? What? When a titty popped out. Oh, sorry. The titty. The yeah. worst thing that happened was that she brought joy to the world. I don't need this. <laughs> this titty. <laughs> I don't need this stripper, this Super Bowl stripper telling me about Kamala Harris. <laughs> Put your nipple ring away, bitch. People started, you know, oh, we got to, we, we, Janet needs to get up out of here. I was like, guys, pardon me. She's brought me nothing but joy. I'm going to give her a few days and maybe like see how this plays out before I start tweeting think pieces about how horrible she is. Although it's funny, now I am hearing from people. I just heard from a reliable source in the music industry that the Mizza? I heard from the Mizza. We are now from what by the way, why is his name the Mizza? I don't know. So like it was like a it had to be a joke playing playing on Wu-Tang. It right? yeah. had to be. Had to be. Um, but anyways, let me you know what? Let me not say anything. I've already gotten into it with white people the last couple of weeks. But DJ Vlad uh wanted me to go towards his his penis. So I, I don't he talked very spicy. I don't want problems with anyone. I'm just here. Go towards his penis. I he he invited me to his crotch. Oh, so I don't fuck. I heard that was the last word of his thing. Do we have to watch it? Do we have to watch the end when he just supposedly goes, You'll suck my dick? 
<laughs> Wait, you didn't watch it? I still haven't watched it. I told you. You didn't watch it. I still haven't watched it. Uh, I'm proud of you, bro. Yeah, thank you, man. I'm I proud think. of you. I just read I'm in the comments, though. They were like, yo, damn, at the end, he really just said, suck my dick. I was like, what? Oh, my God. We read comments? That's the same thing. No, it's not. Yes, you know, it is. No, because the comments made me feel good. <laughs> the comments were like, yo, fuck DJ Vlad. And yo, how was Vlad? Yo, why is Vlad all of a sudden tough when he's talking shit to Rosenberg? So it was fine. Um, but yeah, so but I, I just Jen, but don't talk politics. Just don't do it. You don't I, have to do it. I though that's the one thing I'm I'm miffed by. But now what I'm hearing is from my sources is that she is in fact being like fully managed by Randy Jackson and that he really is like a full off big conspiracy, big hanging out with RFK, big oh. like and he's into it. So right. maybe she actually, that is the orbit that she's in. But the thing is, when you read in the context of the interview, I'm like, she clearly had no information. And the rest of the interview wasn't even about that. I can't decide whether it's good journalism to include it because she said it or whether it's like bad journalism because it was clickbait in something that had nothing to do with politics. Now, once any those people, anytime they get any time of any type of light on their article or news story or whatever, they like it. They gotta like it. It's their job. I guess you're right. I just, I just hate but that. My we, thing is these celebrities. So why? I just read a story and they're like, the Democrats are really trying to get the endorsement from Bad Bunny to swing the Latino vote. And I, I, I actually have a joke about this. I hate election years because they just go, how will the Latinos vote? One blanket statement to all Latinos when most Latinos from different countries are very different culturally and ethnically. It's just a language. They're so different, in fact, that Saif's not even Latino. And yet he is. You see what I'm saying? Think about I the am, diversity. He is, but he's not. And like, they're like, Bad Bunny, da, 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 like, Yo, come on. Bad Bunny, do doesn't, need these? Bad Bunny doesn't represent and all. So Bad Bunny talks crazy. Oh, my God. Yeah, well, people don't even know what he's saying. Like, those cute records that you dance to, he's talking wild. Either some sex shit or some street shit. Oh, no, the sex stuff is dirty. I'm no, he's like, wild. Porno, porno talk, Bad Bunny. He was talking about um when he was going out with um the Kardashian chick. Kendall? Is that the one he was going out with? I think he was with Kendall, yeah. And he was like, yo, I just smashed you in your mom's, in the bathroom of your mom's house. Like, whoa. He said that about? Yeah. I mean, he didn't say her name, but everybody knew who he was talking about. Sheesh. He talks wild. So I do. And have... mind you, this is translated by my Puerto Rican barber. I was about to say, you have no idea. Yeah, I don't know what he said. <laughs> How would you possibly know? <laughs> um, I do want to say. I was thinking about uh, Puffy this week. Right. Where were you at? Like a like a freak off? Well, the reason I thought about him was because they I just got the um the the Evite thing that they canceled the next freak off. Oh no. What well, the um wait, when did, did he go to jail? Was oh, it past Labor Day? Like a week yeah. Yeah. So all he probably didn't do is uh his white party freak off this year. Yeah, I don't think so. Mm. So yeah, no freak off. No, no freak off. Um, no, but I was thinking about it because I, for some reason, I don't remember why. I started thinking about the city college basketball game. And I was like, yo, it's really crazy that before he even became famous, in New York, like news, he became famous because he put together an event horribly and now to say it these this many years later it hits different nine people were killed like died yeah, what, why, why you say he put it together horribly well he he he, he takes the brunt of the blame but he didn't build the building no no he he oversold his event he promoted an event that had too many people and it wasn't the first time he'd done that he they rushed the door. Right, he, right, but I mean, I, I'm not blaming him. I'm not saying he murdered the people himself. No, I know. I'm just saying that shit always bothers me because it's like he 
he threw a hot event. Okay, maybe security. Maybe security wasn't handled correctly. Well, we don't. Well, we'd have to go back and look at the trial and see whatever whatever happened on in. Well, Jessica was part of that. That's and, how I know about it. And what did what did she say? She was part of the promotion too. Yeah, she she helped put it together. The the they rushed the door, and the doorway was um like very narrow, and all these people try to get in, and they some people got trampled. Um, here, but yeah, the, I know what you're saying. Like, it's I'm weird just saying that, it's uh, it, it's a crazy start. You know what yeah. I mean? It's a yeah. really crazy and and to start. still be so successful after that. No, it, 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 I mean, it was like forgotten about. Uh, this is here's a little random uh, thing. Let's see. Am I, did I share that with you or no? Yeah, I shared it. Right. I was going to pass out because it was hot on that staircase. You know what I'm saying? And when they closed the doors, I knew someone was going down. City College was. A by the way, that was um, an interview with Pork Chop, who was an eyewitness. Deep, deep, deep experience for me. I was there. I was on the floor. I watched people take their last breath, regurgitate, and die. Okay, you said a, a female? Yeah, a female. A female? Yeah. Okay, you had a asthma attack? Uh-huh. Okay, you passed out unconscious. They can't revive her. He was there at the doorway pulling people in, trying to get them... Oh, yeah. It was bananas. I, I I pulled friends through the door. You know, I, I first time in my life I, I gave mouth to mouth resuscitation to people. I was just bananas yeah. to me. When we got down to the bottom, we just pulled them out, and that's when I think Tuffy came around. But I just walked off for a minute, and I came back. It was just all them people. You know what I'm saying? Oh, there's a, apparently a documentary. All the people, that's, I'm saying, no, I don't know what you're saying. You didn't say anything, sir. Yeah, that wasn't. You didn't. I didn't fully now, understand. Ben, oh, here's a Geraldo did you, episode. How did, you, Van Silk, how did you know that that was going to end up violently? Experience about being in the business since the since rap first started Who's that? in 73. Van Silk, is that? I mean, I have to owe it to this man sitting here over here for Caban Bada. Where is he? Who Stand, initially started rap music. <laughs> who is he? <laughs> Yo, Geraldo just said, he said, who is he? Who is he? Young ass Van Bada. We, we don't understand that rap in the audience of the what did you tell me, tell me specifically Why? what did you say trying to get a message out to the kids to come in peace you know because we haven't had big events in new york besides the last one i did at the ritz in october and rap hasn't been in any big venues so when you bring in something with all the nature of the stars that's going to come here during the holiday period the kids want to go out to see them because they don't have a chance to see them but on mtv or bet and the bottom line is, you know, rap music is taking a, a pretty bad beating because of the fact that people don't tend to listen to it. They downgrade it because it was started in the black ghettos and it's making billions of dollars. And they trying to take it out, out of our hands. The majority of promoters out here that are doing these big venue concerts are white promoters. Random white lady Not looking concerned. The city college case. But the city college kid was lack of experience. You know, bottom line is, Everyone is to blame in this. Okay, wait a second. Is the bo- are everyone to blame? It's easy to say that society, everybody, everyone. Well, to blame. Everybody. Say- but wait a second. You called the Daily News right. because you felt that this particular event, and the because garden. of a pent up demand or whatever, was going to result in a tragedy. You said it. You did. You say it because you knew that rap and violence are inextricably interwoven. It's not that it's not rap and violence. It's it's the chemical it's the chemical imbalance of a lot of these rap fans who don't have respect for the work that these rappers are doing. Who's that? A lot of rap chemical kids imbalance. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I- yeah, I want to see who else is sitting on this panel on Geraldo. I'm talking about the drugs, athletes. We'll see kids that that don't believe in rappers, believe in what they're saying, the hard work that we put into this music. Okay, you can have 30 or 40 kids that just want to come there to rob somebody. Speaking of which, I want you to take a shot of. Uh, uh, of uh, Mr. and Mrs. Dargan. It was their son who was robbed. Oh. I mean, aside from Gosh. Christina's son, Darren, their son was robbed. You know how they found out? His dead body was robbed. They found out when they got a call on a charge that was made for over $100. Was it at a restaurant? What was it? Is that a restaurant? All right. Uh, and Mrs. And Dargan the said to the caller, here. my son didn't make that charge. My son. So the, the theme of this episode of Geraldo was we're taking the, the terrible tragedy of the basketball game and making it to 
hip hop is just evil. Let's see. Yeah, I mean, this is 91, 92, some shit. Yeah, this is still in the era of 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 hip hop being just considered bad in general. Like Heavy D was the star of that celebrity basketball game. Oh yeah, that was the big deal was that Heavy D was there. Someone's MTV newsreel from way back. This a is year has passed since the CCNY tragedy, but people have not forgotten what happened, including the event's promoter, 22-year-old Sean Puffy Combs. He was cited in the New York City Me Deputy too. Mayor's report for failing to adequately alert student organizers to the need for strong security and crowd control. Since then, Combs has uh, maintained a low profile security. in the press, which he feels has wrongly portrayed him. I'm famous for, like, the, the kid in their minds who threw the tragic city college and that's 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 kind of hard for me sometimes to live with in the first couple of days when it happened there was nobody to really 91. answer for what was going on you know what i'm saying so it, it, i think the media and everybody was trying to figure out why this happened like people are tired especially amongst black people and they're tired of seeing us kill each other let's go through that that just the situations where um lack of love for our race and for ourselves. Rapper Heavy D, who's managed by Combs and co-hosted the ill-fated event, says that Combs is a good kid who deserves all the success he's achieved in 92, despite its dismal... Not, not, that line didn't age well as of this past week, Hebster. <laughs> just, a, a just a good kid trying to get a shot. <laughs> oh, I have you didn't know Recently, what Combs was promoted to vice president of artist development at Uptown Records, started his own record label, and is the creator and executive producer behind some of R&B's top acts. Bob MC. <laughs> Puffy, responsible for that. Mary J. Blige. <laughs> Holy Puffy. Nobody wanted to take a chance from me. Nobody wanted to help me. You know, and it wasn't like I was pressed or begging anyone for help, but Puffy volunteered. He wanted to help me. Love and Tyler action. That was such a New York response from Mary. I mean, it's not like anyone was pressed or anything, but. <laughs> to find a defendant, <laughs> Calvin Brodus, not guilty of the crime of murder in the first degree. What was going through your mind at the time that the jury was reading? Oh, this is her whole newsreel. So this. What, just cut to Snoop trial? Now it's the Snoop trial. This is a very interesting... Oh, look, hold on. I'm going to jump ahead, though. She got some interesting stuff. Jump ahead to now Biggie's... Not going to miss never hearing the song. No, this song sucks. For the Biggie Smalls tribute song, Sean Puffy Combs says he found inspiration in the 80s hit single for The Police, Every Breath You Take. Inspiration? Wait, wait, really? Sai, did you hear this? <laughs> no, what is this? She said, I, I, I never heard this. She's saying that Puffy actually was inspired by the song <laughs> Every Breath You Take by Sting. <laughs> wow. What, what is this, Rap Radar? Who is this lady, B-Dot? I'm it learning. was like two weeks after the death of Biggie. I was just, you know, watching MTV, just being in the house. And um, that song came on, and it just made me feel a certain way. In the world of rap music, especially today, that when you sample a song, you have to get clearance for it. So did you approach Sting and yes. ask no, him I, for I the I song? Forgot. I forgot. Yes, Sting. He let us use the song a and Records. Thank goodness let us use the song. They felt where we was coming from. Sting got a lot of soul, though. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Sting's a different type of, of individual. Little- oh, man, Saif. It's, it's been a... Listen, I just I just ended up thinking about the, the City College thing because it is a crazy story, man. Like, you think about that happened now, God forbid. There was a, a an event in New York where nine people were trampled to death. How big a story that would be it gives you a reminder of what it felt like then and then it still ended up sort of being this footnote i bet half the people listening right now don't even know what happened no they don't right this is kind well, of a new I, york it's, story it's, like, okay so what 91 is what how long ago it's 92 i think it said uh, december 91 on that video oh, so it's the end of 91 okay cool yeah how long ago is that uh let me do the mathematicals 33 years ago fuck and like the people who, the, and the crazy thing is the kids who, some of the kids who died were 18 years old, bro. Bro, people don't like, 
there's a there's a huge I I don't I don't know how to say it. Like there's a huge disconnect between our history and then these the new shit. Like City College, Central Park Five, um uh uh Happy Land Social Club. There's all these New York stories that are just embedded in me. And then even 9-11, even 9-11 is not relevant to a 22 year old. Not the way it's relevant. Like Pearl Harbor is to us. <laughs> you know what I mean, right. But they were born post 9-11. It just doesn't hit the same. It doesn't hit the same. And they're like, they don't even know like all these, they don't even know like just general references. Like, Yo, there's people that don't even know Jay Z was like a ill rapper. You think that exists too? It does. I've seen it. They know who he is. They know he's Beyonce's husband. They know he made music, but like they don't know him for like how we know him. It's kind of crazy. I know. I, I someone said that to me right recently. Like I don't even think people realize Jay Z raps. I was like, all right, I think they realize Jay Z raps. But, but it don't mean nothing to them. Like it is, it is crazy, man. They might even know Jay Z songs, like in general, but not know it's him. It's pretty wacky. Um. Anyways, yeah. So apparently, I drove. I drove past a uh, a, a department. Of, a department of correct. Well, the new freak off. A department of corrections bus yesterday. Yeah. It's like, damn, Buffy could be on there. You think he should have ran? No. No, because because here's why. We, at this point, I feel comfortable saying that he has done horrible, disgusting, criminal things. I feel comfortable. I, I've heard enough and seen enough to know that. Yeah, but it's not proven. Well, only only a couple things are proven, right? But the big stuff that they think they're getting him for life on, I, that stuff isn't the, the stuff that I'm talking about. Like, I'm talking about, like, treating women horribly, being physically abusive, uh, coercing people into doing things, all of these horrible, immoral things. I don't know that that's where they're trying to get the big years on him. Mm -hmm. So it's probably worth have, going to court if they think they can beat the bigger, broader sex trafficking, like they might be able to think they can beat those charges. Uh, you're talking about Puffy and his defense team. Yes. Okay. Like they might be like, listen, bro, you did some horrible shit. You're going to at least do 10, 15. But this nah. whole life thing, you're, we, we, we don't think you're going to do. You don't think he's going to do 10 or 15? No, I'm saying even if that was the deal, like I think if you do like I'd be out, bro. But I don't have I don't have the arrogance, the ego. I've never been a mogul, a CEO, a billionaire, none of those things. So I don't know how those people think. Oh, and you're but leaving I would have been part. gone you're leaving a long a, time ago. You're leaving on another part. You also have never committed years of sex crimes. Yeah, but I uh, but the ar I, I, again, we don't know, uh, you know, we don't know the facts. We, we are all this is all hearsay what's out there, but speculation but um if i was <laughs> i'd be out yo i'd be out i'd find a way to funnel all the money into some kind of offshore account and just be it's over had a the phrase is had a good run we had a good run well and then you run as long as you can no you go to a country where they don't extradite And then you just hope that you're Gucci at that point. Then you just have like, you live like a retired celebrity. Like you have security, have some real hardcore security. And you just live out your days on the beach. I know it's impossible. It's impossible. No. But. Uh, I hear you, Saif, because here's the way I look at it. You might as well do that. Worst case is you get extradited, then you go to it's, trial. It's right? jail, 
it's jail because you can't do any of the things you used to do. It's still jail. Right. But it's free jail. It's freedom. You know what I mean? Because all the money you pay for security in the real world, you got to pay for security in jail. How much that money cannot run out. And well, and his money, his money would not run out. You think? If he was hiding, if he was hiding, yeah, no. but, yeah. I I don't think it would, because I think he's I think it's going to run out now, because of the amount of lo- the, the the what he's going to have to spend on court. I don't know. I mean, you think there's going to be like a a jailbreak? Um. No, I don't think like what is he doing in jail right now? Um, Puffy is like how corrupt is it? Is it good fellas? Like is he cutting the is he cutting the garlic? No, so thin. No, with the razor blade. No, because what they're saying about I don't know much about jail site, but they're saying this one that he's in in Brooklyn, there is no hanging out and cutting garlic. This guy, I mean, there's definitely like people getting paid off to protect them and I'm sure he has a phone I don't know I don't fucking know this is wild Saif what else is going on besides the puffy of it all oh do you have people in your life coming up to you who don't normally ask about stuff going can I just ask you about the oh, thing? all day but that's been happening since the since it, since all this stuff first started and I tell everybody yeah I've, I've DJed puffy parties Oh, did you did you go to the after party? Nah, <laughs> never. And Sife is the one you know it's safest to say was near nothing. He didn't do drugs. You I know that. Drugs. Bro, when I, I used to have a truck, I used to have a Chevy Tahoe, and I bought it. Flex put me onto this a mechanic that he used to use, and it was a drug dealer's Tahoe in 90s. 99 i think and it was like a 94 tahoe and (laughs) he's like yo my mechanic got a tahoe the guy went to jail he wants to sell this tahoe 20 grand i took my sound bombing check which was exactly 20 grand and just gave it away and got the truck right and this truck had tvs in it but literal TVs, not like they have LCD screens now. These were old school little TVs that you would find in your mom's kitchen so she could watch her stories while she's cooking up, while she's chopping the garlic with a razor blade, you know? And it had a VCR under the seat. VCR tapes. And it also had a TV antenna where I could watch broadcast shows, right? Wow. All stopped after An 9/11. antenna? Yeah, because the, the TV antennas used to be on top of the World Trade Center. So when they knocked down the World Trade Centers, all the TV signals stopped for a while until they figured out where else to broadcast from. And then they were like, oh, let's just go all fully digital. But I, ha- I used to watch TV in my car, like change the channels. And I remember I left Justin's one night. Uh-oh. I left Justin. That's, you're, talking about, like, you're talking about Diddy's. Early yeah, did he used to have a restaurant called Justin's. Named after his son. Named after his son, Justin, right? And then uh, there always used to be parties there. And then I remember I was leaving, and I was outside of my car, and somebody was like, yo, we going over to the blah, 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 whatever. I don't remember what, like the after party. We going to the after party. And I looked at my screen in the car, and the Twilight Zone was on. And I was like, nah, I'm good. And I was just watching TV. <laughs> I was watching the Twilight Zone in my car. Saif, you must have been living life at that moment. Did you think you could get better for you then? <laughs> no, it was the, it was pretty good. Where was the antenna? Just on the back, on the top, like a limo, like a limousine antenna. Wow. And how to get the channels? Pretty clear. Yeah, I mean, once in a while it would cut off, but it was like it was like getting the radio. Same same type of signal, like the same way you get the radio in right, the car. You just got your TV signal, boom, four, five, TV. two. Star Trek, I Love Lucy. You had two, you news. had five, you had nine, you had 11. Two, two four, four, 
five, nine, seven, nine, eleven, thirteen, and then, and then you would switch it to the to get the higher ones. Like you could get like thirty one, which was Video Music Box. Ooh, UHF, UHF, yeah. Switch that UHF action, baby. <laughs> Wow. You know, I used to watch on Channel 9. Um, what was that guy? He was like a fake Howard Stern Downey Morton. Rob Morton Downey Jr. <laughs> or was it just Morton? Did I just confuse him with Robert Downey? Morton. No, Morton. Yeah, what was it? No, it was Morton Downey Jr. Yeah. Morton Downey Jr. Smoking a cigarette and yelling. Yeah. <laughs> Shit. Wow. Sife, these were the days, bro. And I think Howard Stern had a show on Channel 9, too, he back did. in the day. No, they refer to it as the Channel 9 show. Yeah, the Channel Nine. Yeah, they definitely had a show. It's. I was at the beach the other day. My brother and and his kids were in town, and we were at the beach on Sunday. It was still nice enough to like, you know, kind of cool, but but sit there and just yeah. hang out. Something you would still never do, but we did it. And I pulled out my phone, and as we're hanging out, I'm watching whatever football game I want in crisp, better quality than ever existed as we yeah. were kids on my iPhone. On your phone. I said to Nick, I was like, yo, bro, imagine when I was like a little kid, if you had told me this was possible. And my brother said, he was like, yo, I remember when you were obsessed with trying to get a watchman. He was like, all you wanted was a watchman. Wait, what's a watchman? Oh, what's a watchman? The little TV? Yeah, but the little nasty one. Hold on. (laughs) I'm about to show you. That's basically what was in the car. Watchman technology. Oh, I'm sure it was, but look how nasty this is relative to today. This is all I wanted as a kid. Oh, my God. You remember that? Remember that. Yeah. Yo, this, this, the- <laughs> this little black and white TV. Black and white. This one works. I got to get it. I might have to get it. Yeah. VHF, UHF. You should definitely get that. And then, And then... They got better as time went on. This is the color one. They they only want fifty bucks for this joint. Looks like two, four, five, seven, nine, eleven, thirteen. The little color joint. This was all I wanted. Let me see it. Pull it up. It's uh, not up there. You didn't see it? Oh, no. I, I oh my bad. Sorry. Yeah, this is this right here. This is the next level. A watch, man. Oh my god. This is as good as I thought it could get. And then and then I remembered settling because I ended up getting a mini. Let's see if I can find one. A mini. I, I had a clock radio TV. <laughs> Yo, it was so nasty. Oh, it was. It was oh, here it is. I oh, think, I remember. I think I found it. Yeah, no, I had that. Or very. That. If it wasn't exactly, it was just like this. No, I, yeah, did, I, I didn't have. I don't think I had that top. But you, but you remember these? Yeah. I'll take that right now. I was like, oh, man. I could watch TV in my room. I'm <laughs> lit. And now, on your phone, you can literally watch HD in color of every movie in the history of life. Anything. And it's like, honestly, it's... it. Let me explain something. This is why the next generation sucks yeah you, you can't have this much y'all i know this sound i know every generation has said that the next generation has certain things that makes them soft or whatever but but the ability i'm being serious about this part the ability to have access to everything i think there's a chance it will make you appreciate nothing although i'm not gonna lie to you my nephew's ability to know songs bro for a 16 year old my bro my brother was playing they know my, my brother's playing name that tune. My nephew was hitting everything in the first note. Although he didn't know nothing but a G thing, which surprised me. But he generally speaking, he knew a lot. But just because you know it, I don't know if that means you appreciate it all. This vinyl thing is going crazy. Is it? Is it still really feeling like oh, a thing? Travis Scott released um his what? before the rodeo mixtape. Yeah. You saw that? Yeah, I saw it's out. I haven't listened. I love before the rodeo. I've never listened. That's to it. A mixtape before his first album. It's on the charts. It's number one. Number one. Yeah. And 
he released the vinyl on his website, and it's I think it's I think it sold one hundred and fifty six thousand copies. The vinyl did. The vinyl sold that many copies. The vinyl. It's like I guess it's. I guess to a young fan, it's. I guess it's like merch, like everyone buys the t-shirts because the music was basically for free. It was like streamed. And now they found a way to go back and sell that. You know what I mean? That's a, but by the way, Travis is almost unfair to compare. I was trying to find a picture of us with Travis. Well, I, we never took a picture with Travis. I know we did. Where? I, I, maybe we're not in one together, but you see this photo here. That's Travis Scott. Yeah. Look, I, yo, Sife's, um, Sife's attempts to get clout with white people on the internet. He's getting so hype right now. He's like, I'm about to post this right now. Why? Why was I hype? Who's? Because you're like, I got a picture with Travis. This, yo, the kids are gonna love this. The random uh, white girls in Oshkosh, they're not gonna believe I'm with Travis Scott. Wait, who's that? That's Action Bronson. Who's that next to Bronson? Bob. Bob. Uh, Vanessa. That's drama Satin. in the back. Vanessa Satin, DJ Drama, Peter Rosenberg, Trinidad James. Some fat Puerto Rican, Travis Scott, and the top right. That might be like, wow, I don't a, even remember Travis. A, a manager there. or something. Because I don't know who that is. That's crazy. Why are you so surprised? I forgot he was there. I forgot. I I, I, oh, I remember only one time meeting him back in the day at the bait party. Anyways, um. Anything else happening in your world that you would like want to talk about? You have any shows coming up? Are you going anywhere? Yeah, I'm going to um, Big Pine Comedy Festival this Thursday, the 26th. I'll be in uh, Arizona, Big Pine Comedy Festival. And then for the rest of the weekend, I'll be in Las Vegas at Skank Fest. Oh. Uh, Wu Tang is going to be there. I should try to go oh, see. Oh, you're about to do it again? Again and I again? Might go do it again. Again and again? Yet and again, and then although um, I did just hear that Inspector Deck came out and said he doesn't know if Kamala Harris is black. <laughs> Yo, you know her father, a white man. Um, and then uh, the weekend after that, I will be in Houston, Texas. Bun B, where you at? H Town, baby. Bun B, Travis Scott. Uh, Megan The Stallion, come on out. I'll be at Riot Comedy Club. <laughs> I thought you. I think you were naming people you were doing an event with. And no, then I realized no, no. you're naming everyone in Houston. Yeah. Uh, I want them to come out. I'll be there the 3rd, the 4th, and the 5th of October. Riot Comedy Club in Houston, Texas. Come through, Juan Eppers. Feeling very good today, guys. My football team played a great game yesterday. Oh, what's going on with football? My commander. I heard Travis Kelsey's not doing what, he, what he's supposed to do. Yeah, who cares, man? Let's talk about what what my commanders did with our new quarterback, Jaden Daniels, yeah. last night. Who? Jaden Daniels. Hey, did you already DM him? I don't, I don't know him. I know. But that's how you get to know people. You'd be DMing them on a random. Yo, yo, what's good, kid? I do. I follow him, but I haven't DM'd him. I, I may have commented on a picture. Okay, you see where you get. See how and far. They did, a, they did good. They were great last night. Uh, let's see. The Giants kind of suck, but they won the other day. Okay. Trying to give you the good. Where are you going to be next? I'm sorry. You said Houston? Yeah. Texans are struggling, man. They're not doing what they're supposed to be doing, man. Oh, what's going on with the Texans? Yeah. Uh, the quarterback's name is C.J. Stroud. So you could be like, yo, man, C.J.'s got a... We need what, about the, what about the Cowboys? How's the Cowboys doing? Cowboys oh, psh, looking bad right now. Looking bad. They're looking bad. So they're doing what they do. Psh, you know the Cowboys are going to do what they do. Oh, now you know the Cowboys ain't going to do nothing. <laughs> uh... How's the um? You want you need any more? Yeah, just how's the Dolphins? Dolphins. Tua got hurt. They're terrible. Oh fuck! Jets are playing pretty good with Aaron Rodgers, though. You got to talk about Aaron Rodgers. Whoa, he's the one that um killed those people, right? Sorry. Then he killed some people in Boston or something. That's Aaron Hernandez. <laughs> oh, that's okay. That's. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I was just starting that show on Hulu. There's an Aaron Hernandez show. Yeah. Of course. We love murder in this country. Murder, 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 and kill, kill, kill. Mass okay. Days, he always knew. Uh, guys, we love you. Go see Sife. He'll be at the fart box on uh, Monday <laughs> through Wednesday. <laughs>
in Shitsville, Tennessee. <laughs> Come on out to the fart box in Shitsville. It's going to be a great time. It's a great time. All right, peace out.